I'm Jordan Poole from the University of Michigan Basketball. You are watching TR Sports. Please enjoy. Welcome back to TR Sports. I'm your host, Toby, and we're here for another episode of uh, TR Sports. And, uh, yeah, um, we got a lot of NBA to cover uh, not much MLB, but we have a story to talk about. We have a special segment for the MLB I want to talk about. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to start with basketball. And before we do that, though, uh, the audio on this one might be a little rough because uh, my microphone broke for my computer. So I'm going to get a new Rode microphone, which should really help the quality of the podcast and uh, help... Uh, you guys and me get where we want to be with this podcast. So it's a step in the right direction. And uh, we're going to start by talking about uh, 76ers basketball. If you didn't know, I'm a Sixers fan, so usually I can provide a little more knowledge on this topic than some other series. So let's get into it. Man, this series has been an interesting one to watch. And I said uh, in last episode of the podcast that the Sixers were either going to win in seven or six games, and uh, they're up 2-1, which a lot of people didn't expect. Uh, I certainly didn't expect uh, the Sixers to go uh, win game two of the series on the road. Uh, I expected it to be 2-2, which each team winning their two home games to start the series, which clearly clearly didn't happen. Um, So... And now we have a series, and uh, a lot of people didn't expect a series. A lot of people expected Raptors in five and four. And I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant right here about first take and stuff like that. They always count teams out if it's a blowout game one, like the Sixers. They always said, you know what, they're done. It could be a sweep. And then Sixers go on to win game two and three, and suddenly they're like, man, this game, the Sixers are incredible. And B's one of the greatest big men in the game. And I'm like... You can't just switch that quickly. I mean, they really do. All these analysts, uh, they switch so quickly um, from one opinion uh, to another uh, based on one game. And um, it's uh, definitely interesting. And what I saw in Game 3 from the Sixers was nothing but perfection. I mean, they shot well from three. Jimmy Butler had a good game, and Beat had an incredible game, windmill dunk at the end, take it away fourth quarter. The Sixers didn't blow the lead, and poor Kawhi Leonard doesn't have any help. That's the issue with the Raptors. Kyle Lowry is a regular season player. He is. I mean, in the playoffs, he has not done anything his whole career. And uh, I think the Raptors have to think about uh, if Kawhi Leonard leaves, they're going to have to trade Kyle Lowry because... They have Pascal Siakam built around him. Kyle Lowry is not your franchise point guard. Uh, I don't think uh, they're going to win the NBA Finals if they win the series, the Raptors, basically because of Kyle Lowry. Uh, He's good at taking uh, charging fouls. That's what I'm going to say for him in the playoffs. I mean, he's a pest. Uh, He's just horrible in the playoffs. And Kawhi Leonard, I think, is going to leave if they don't win this series. I think Kawhi Leonard is probably going to go to the Clippers uh, so it'll be very interesting. Uh, but if Kawhi Leonard goes to the Clippers, I also think Jimmy Butler will have to make a decision. Do I want to go to the Clippers or do I want to stay with the Sixers? Uh, but we're here to talk about the series. So back on track. Uh, so they switched, uh, the defending assignment. So, uh, and Bede is now a lot more on Siakam, which is, uh, great for the Sixers because Siakam cannot guard Embiid. And then Siakam's coming down the floor. Uh, and he has to try to score on, on Embiid, which sometimes works, but uh, it has not been working these past two games. And, I mean, the real surprise in this series is the Raptors' bench is getting outplayed by the Sixers' bench. James Ennis, a minor pickup at the trade deadline for the Sixers, has been huge. He's had more points by himself in the series than the whole entire Raptors' bench. Think about that. Think about that. No one knew who James Ennis III was before the trade. And now, he's the key part of the Sixers bench. Boban hasn't played any minutes. That's because of Gasol. No way Boban can score on Gasol. Greg Monroe has been serviceable. 
he's been okay on the pick and roll, which is, you know, his weakness. And, uh, I mean, the Sixers bench, uh, Mike Scott, way to step up. Uh, one of the best role players I've seen in Philadelphia in a long time. And, uh, he doesn't choke, which, uh, players like with the Sixers last year in the Celtics series, Robert Covington was horrible. Dario was horrible. And Mike Scott is like an older Dario Saric. He's able to do all the things that Dario can, but in a experienced player that doesn't have uh, long slumps. Uh, I'm not saying he's better. I'm not saying I would rather have Mike Scott, but at the moment, in the playoffs, I would rather have Mike Scott. And the Sixers bench has really been working. Uh, Van Fleet hasn't been doing enough for the Raptors, and it's just been a rough series for the Raptors. But this narrative can all change next week if the Raptors go on and win a game and steal it from the Sixers at home. Now, if they lose to the Sixers, I'm ready to say the series is over. But I don't think they're going to lose another game to the Sixers uh, while the Sixers are at home. I think they're going to steal uh, the Sixers' home game, and the series is going to be back to 2-2. And uh, I feel like it's going to be a competitive series and go to six or seven games. Uh, so they're going to take home court is... Uh, my opinion, with the Raptors. Uh, when we return, we are going to talk about the Rockets and the Warriors series and the problem with officiating. Then we're going to talk about the four-overtime game we saw for the Portland Trailblazers and the Denver, Denver Nuggets on Friday night that went all the way to 2 a.m. So we'll be right back after this quick break. The Warriors. Um, it's been a season for them. I mean, a lot of people forget. I was watching uh, the Bill Simmons podcast, and a lot of people forget the first year the Golden State Warriors got Kevin Durant, they had 68 wins. They don't have that many wins anymore. They're in the 59-60 area. I'm not 100% sure what their record was this year. But... Last year, they took the Rockets to seven games. And I said this year, everyone was hyping up the Rockets too much. There's no way they're going to put up a fight against the Warriors. I said five games for the Rockets. It's looking like five games right now. The Warriors are up 2-0 in the series. And it's been a heated, heated one. I mean, uh, Harden's eye uh, gets injured, and uh, they're all red. It really looks horrible and painful. And... The officiating has been blasted in this series, and another a little bit of a rant time. Officiating gets a lot of hate, but you're going to miss calls, and I feel like in this series, some of the calls that were missed were not that bad. Uh, the Harden at the end of the game foul in game one, where he shot that three and was fouled, uh, even though they didn't call it, it might have been a foul, but Harden... Gets so many calls. So many calls. And one shooting foul. That that at the end of a game. That Harden completely draws. And just flops in midair. And it's not called. I don't have a problem with it. Uh, I don't. I really don't. And uh, a lot of people are thinking. Uh, James Harden's faking his injury. Uh, which I think is blasphemous. There's, he's not doing that. And uh, the series is really intense. And um, I feel like the Rockets are going to lose uh, Game 3 at home, but then they're going to come uh, in Game 4 also at home, and they're going to take the lead. Uh, but you guys will know if they win Game 3 or not because this comes out on Sunday, and I'm doing this on Saturday. A big issue with the Rockets is Chris Paul wasn't what he was. If, it, if Chris Paul was in for Game 7 last year, Rockets versus Warriors, they might have won. But Harden is a playoff choker. I'm ready to say it. Before, I wasn't. But, I mean, he is. He's just not what he is during the regular season. And I think a part of that is because he's fatigued, right? He did so much work during the regular season. But this is the time that it really counts. And they're going to have to win this Game 3 if they want to win the series. If they want to have a chance, they have to win this Game 3. They cannot go down 3-0. If they go down 3-0, I still think they'll take a game in Game 4. But 
I don't think they can win the series. I'm about ready to say it's over. If they lose this game, it's definitely over. So game three, you guys will know who won game three of the series when this podcast comes out. And it's a really intense series. I mean, the Warriors are just so good, and a lot of people are saying Kevin Durant's going to leave. I don't think so, and uh, we'll figure that out as we get closer to the summer, of course, but Kevin Durant is in a great place. The team's in a great place. Their chemistry is great. I don't see any reason why uh, the Warriors would break up, and I don't think the Rockets will win a championship in the next 10 years, if I'm going to be honest. I feel they had their window. Their window was last year, and they missed it. They had a one-year window, and they missed it. They they missed their window, and now they're going to have to pay the consequences in this Warriors series by losing. Um, team wasn't what they were. A lot of people are high on them, and I don't completely understand it, uh, why people are so high on this uh, Rockets team, especially Bill Simmons had um, the Rockets winning the series, which doesn't, I I don't see that. Uh, and I think the series is going to uh, wrap up in the next five games. I got the Warriors in five, and that is the Warriors uh, series. Okay, now it's time to get to the four-overtime game of Portland versus Nuggets. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, I couldn't watch the whole game. I'm sorry. I fell asleep. It went to 2 a.m. And I, I mean, you look at the highlight video. And there's only highlights from the fourth quarter and onward because that game was so long. And I think uh, the Trailblazers proved something. Not Damian Lillard, but C.J. McCollum. When people talk about the Trailblazers, they talk about Damian Lillard carrying the Trailblazers on his back. And that's not what happened last night in the four overtime game. What happened was CJ McCollum went off. CJ McCollum had a crazy amount of points, outplayed the Nuggets, and outplayed Damian Lillard, even though they're on the same team. But what that really means is he's very valuable. They would not have won this game without CJ McCollum. And he was he was incredible and I think He's been really counted out his whole career, and uh, he's really proved it uh, tonight that he is one of the stars in Portland. I believe if he was on a team like the Clippers or the Nets, he would be better than D'Angelo Russell. He'd thrive. I mean, I'd take him as a Sixers fan over Tobias Harris, no matter how much I love Tobias Harris. I think CJ McCollum is a great talent. Now, the, uh, the Nuggets. You guys have to close games. We can keep using the excuse of young team. We can keep doing that. But you don't want that. As a Nuggets fan, if, if I was a Nuggets fan, I would tell, I would think to myself, man, yes, we're a young team, but it's time to cut that act. Nicole Jokic is coming in to uh, his prime, right? He's pretty much in his prime now. Jamal Murray, it's your, I think, third year in the league. It's time to start not uh, blowing games. And as that team, they're going to have to step up if they want to win this series because right now, it does not look good for the Nuggets. And I think the Trailblazers are going to win this series in six. Uh, so what a crazy game, an instant classic. Um, uh, it was it was really incredible. Uh, I mean, there's not too much you can say, uh, but... I mean, you really haven't seen anything like that. Uh, I think the last time uh, a four overtime game happened in the playoffs was nineteen was in the nineteen fifties, which is uh, a long time ago, of course. And uh, it's it's again, it's going to be an instant classic. Uh, it's going to go down as uh, one of the greatest games I think in this two thousands two thousand tens era. And, you know, the uh, the really uh, not talked about too much hero of the night was Rodney Hood. In the fourth quarter, Rodney Hood looked like Michael Jordan. And I think that was mostly because he wasn't fatigued. He didn't play much the whole game until the fourth quarter, where, you know, he was completely energized and playing like he was in the third quarter. And uh, he had 28 points, 8 assists, 
eight assists, and six rebounds. And we're talking about minutes here. This is a tough game for the players to take, of course. I think especially for the Trailblazers. Because they had some really heavy minute guys. 58 minutes for Damian Lillard. 60 minutes. 60 minutes. For CJ McCollum. Uh, I mean, you even guys like Evan Turner played 12. Zach Collins played 18. Al Farouk Aminu played 46 minutes. Jamal Murray, 55 minutes on the Nuggets. And the highest minute total of them all, 68 minutes for Nikola Jokic. With 33 points, 14 assists, and 18 rebounds. He's a crazy good player. Not as good as Joel Embiid, however. The argument of Nikola Jokic being the best big in the league, it's just not true. Defensively, not there. He can pass the ball. He's a better passer than Embiid, but Embiid's a better scorer and rebounder than Nikola Jokic. And if Embiid played 65 minutes, he'd have a better stat line than 33, 14, and 18. And that's not to take anything away from Nikola Jokic's incredible game of 33, 14, 18. Only the best of the best can do that. And uh, what an incredible game. And by the way, this is the next day, so it's Sunday. The podcast comes out today, so I'm finishing recording it. But Warriors-Rockets uh, game was last night, and Harden really must have watched my... Uh, audio from yesterday when I recorded that Warriors uh, Rockets segment because Harden went off and that was definitely not a choke job and uh, they proved me wrong they're gonna win a game at home to make the series 2-1 so I still think they're gonna lose in five I think the Warriors are gonna take the next two games they're gonna wake up and Kevin Durant's just gonna play like a monster so uh that should be an interesting series to watch because now it's actually a competition, I feel. So uh, when we come back, we are going to cover Major League Baseball and more specifically Bryce Harper and the Philadelphia Phillies. So we'll be right back after this quick break. Welcome back to TR Sports. Uh, so just watch that intro for our new series on the podcast here, which is um, called uh, Team Focus, where every week we look at a new uh, we look at a new team to cover in the MLB. Because there's not always a lot to talk about when we're talking about uh, the MLB. Every week, you know, not too much changes. Uh, sometimes maybe we won't do a Team Focus because a lot happened that week, but That's not really how the MLB works. So we're going to start our first team focus on the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, And we're going to start with this because for me, it requires the least uh, analysis I have to do. I don't have to look at it uh, too much because I already know a lot about my favorite team, of course. But when it's weeks like the Mariners, right, I'm going to have to do a little more research to really tell you guys about the team, their strengths, weaknesses, and how they've been playing. Uh, And that's... We're going to start with the Phillies here, and we're going to start with Bryce Harper. In his last 15 games, he has played horribly. He's had a batting average hovering near the 100s, if you take away his five-hit game against the Rockies. Hovering near the 100s. That is terrible. Uh, And, of course, Manny Machado just hit uh, two home runs uh, last night uh, with the Padres, but... I think the pressure is a part of Bryce Harper's struggle. I also think he's just not that great. Uh, He's become kind of a one-dimensional hitter. And I have a stat here. I'll put it up on the screen uh, of Bryce Harper's fastball, uh, where he hits his fastballs. And if you could see the upper three quadrants on the strike zone, 0-0-0. That means he hasn't hit a fastball in the upper quadrants this whole season. Not one. And that's 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 terrible. Uh, he cannot hit an upper fastball. And what I think is really interesting is the 750. 
if you look at the uh, your uh, lower right, the uh, final strike zone uh, area here on your lower right, he's batting 750 from that corner, which on fastball, so they're not going to throw him in this area. You see the uh, square of red. They're not going to throw it there. They're going to throw it up in the quadrant, down uh, uh, near his body because he's a lefty. They're going to throw it to this part. They're not going to throw it here where he can extend his arms and swing the ball. Uh... People like Reese Hoskins, on the other hand, uh, can really hit uh, the ball in any part of the strike zone. And I also think a part of that is there's not a lot of pressure on Reese Hoskins to uh, step up and uh, play like a superstar. I mean, he just does that, and he he's also kind of a one-dimensional player, but he's not getting paid $330 million. I'm not saying that the pickup of Bryce Harper wasn't worth it. I'm just saying that... He definitely needs to grow a bit. Uh, he has to get better if he really wants to cement him uh, himself as a legend in this game, even as an all-star. He has His numbers so far are not all-star numbers. So he's going to have to step that up. And like he did last year, hitting 300 after the all-star break really saved his season. Uh, so let's talk about some other Phillies. Of course, they had the crazy offseason. Picked up JT Romuto, picked up guys... Uh, like Andrew McCutcheon, and Andrew McCutcheon's hitting the 260s last time I checked. And his, uh, if you look at his stats, you're like, oh, he's not what he was. But as you, as you really look into uh, uh, his game and what he does, and you look at the advanced analytics, he does a lot of stuff that does not show up on a basic stat paper. And he, you could really see by even just watching the game how much he means to that team. Uh, so what a good pickup by the Phillies uh, for Andrew McCutcheon. Gene Segura has been outstanding. Uh, I did not expect Gene Segura to be this good. I pretty much, uh, pretty much expected him to come in, hit over three hundred. He's been doing that and more. He's been been hitting home runs. I think he has four or three home runs on the season now. He's been great in clutch situations. Great hitter, uh, and he's definitely earned his name, uh, uh, earned his spot among top shortstops uh, this year. And I think he's around eight or seven on that list. Uh, Maybe one day we could do top uh, shortstops in baseball list. That could be really fun to do. So, the real issue with the Philadelphia Phillies is the bullpen. Aaron Nola has been picking it up. I think it was some more fatigue. He had a good outing last time. We'll see if he can keep that up. Still think he's a great pitcher. But for a team with a horrible bullpen and one of the worst farm systems in baseball, you need to do something because David Robertson... Uh, this was a while back, I, mean, I would say like five, six weeks ago, literally walked off a game by walking three of the last four batters. And he walked the last guy, Washington won. Had a, uh, his outing after that was good. Uh, but last night, the Philadelphia Phillies uh, played uh, the Washington Nationals, and they blew it. Adam Morgan let up four uh, runs and two home runs. If they want to win games, they're going to have to sign Dallas Keuchel or Craig Kimbrell. Please, please, I'd be over the roof. That's what you need because last last night's game, our offense was clicking, bullpen was not. And that happens most games. We'd, be a, we'd have a much better record if we were able to have a consistent bullpen and a consistent offense. So if I had to grade the Philadelphia Phillies as a team, uh, which we're going to do for every team focus. We're going to grade the team. So, And then I think when the MLB season ends in October, we'll go over all the grades uh, if I was right or wrong. I'm going to give this Philadelphia team an A. We're going to give them an A. Yeah, we're going to give them an A. I think they're going to get like 90-something wins, win the division, go to the playoffs. Uh, we'll see how deep they run in the playoffs last with no bullpen. We'll see how that happens uh, when you have no bullpen. But the 2008 Phillies did with no starting lineup. Uh, not starting lineup, starting rotation. So uh, I give this team an A. We'll see how they fare during the rest of the season. And that concludes our TR Sports podcast for today. Uh, again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, we're really hoping to p pick up more viewership. But again, we're just trying to be on that grind, trying to get to where we want to be getting better equipment, trying to uh, put out more quality content. If you look over the past couple episodes and look at the first episode to where we are now, certainly a lot of improvements, and I promise the audio will be better 
uh, next episode when we get that nice microphone. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, not a lot to cover this week, that's why it's a little shorter. Uh, but we brought in the new series, so that should hopefully fill some time. Uh, no matter where you're watching this, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, this is your host, Toby, and uh, I'm going to sign off now. Uh, thank you for watching TR Sports, and I'll see you guys later.